Let's take a tour of the Singer Model 353. This sewing machine was made in France, 1973-1974. Uh, it was sold in the United States as the Singer Genie. In Europe, it was sold as the Singer Starlet. Some people call it the new 221K because it is small, it's lightweight, uh, portable. It's, it's kind of built into its own case, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, it does have the bobbin winder on top. The little rubber tire mechanism are under the lid. It has a pull-up post for the thread spool. It's got a handle to be portable, carry it around. Um, this is the thread tension disc for the bobbin winder. And we'll just back off a little bit here and we'll show a, a little tour as we go around. See it's all sealed up inside. And when we come around to the front here, there's a little button built in here and you push that down and this drops open. And then the case just slides right off like that. So it's, uh, it's a really easy, nice setup. Inside the case is a upper thread guide on how to run the upper thread. We'll put that aside for a moment here. We'll continue on the little tour. Very, very typical machine and a Singer machine. A couple changes here. This is your upper thread tension disc here. And in the earlier models, you adjusted the tension like this. But in this model, they went to a little wheel that moves a mechanism inside. Um, there's your take up lever like that. Let me open this up. We'll lift the foot. Raise the needle. This is the bobbin hook and bobbin case and bobbin area like that. The uh, needle plate, instead of having a lever to raise it or screws, it's held in tension by this right here. So you just kind of lift up this side of it and move it off. Like that. And then to take out the bobbin, it's a class 66 bobbin. Just pull it up like that. This is the Apollo bobbin holder. It's a newer style that they went to. If you want to take the bobbin holder out, you push this little lever back that secures it. See if I can get it back all the way. You just kind of lift it up and see if I can raise the feed dog a little bit there and lift it out. So there's the Apollo bobbin holder. Um, very very available all over the internet. A lot of stores have it. Uh, five to eight dollars. Mm -hmm. So to, to put it back in you just have to kind of get it down in there and adjust it so that this little fork gets locked in at the top. Tuck the back side in and, and it kind of I haven't done this too much there. Let's see if we can wiggle it down in there. There. So it locks in that fork, goes over a post. Then you want to move this steel lever back there so that it's held in place. Then to put the needle plate back on, kind of slide it over at an angle and get that under that lever right there and then hold it level level and slide it over and drop it down. So
pretty easy, especially after you do it a couple times. And we come back here. As mentioned before, it's got a pull-up post for the thread spool. I'll show you how to thread it. Tension guide. This is your stitch width. Straight stitch and then into your different widths for zigzag. Needle position lever. Uh, most of the time you, you use it in the center position. Um, you would go left when you wanted to make a uh, buttonhole. You would be using that then. And you would go right for some specialty stitches like uh, satin stitching, especially narrow satin stitching where you want it right over to the seam. Most of the time you'll be in right. This is your blind stitch setting, uh, regular zigzag, your other zigzag, reverse button. Stitch length from, mm, let's see what that says there, I think it's about 6 up to 20, and I pushed it a little past 20, it maybe got up to about 24, 25 stitches per inch. Now this is your on and off switch, right there, also turns on the light. And coming around the back end, it's very simple. This is where the power cord, it's a, it's a double lead power cord. So from the wall and then to here and then to the foot pedal. And the hand wheel, this was a nice uh, new feature. I thought it was uh, clever. Instead of having a two-part wheel where you hold one and you turn this to release the mechanisms when you want to wind a bobbin, this has a little bobbin button there, but really it just depresses in. When you do that, that disengages the needle bar and the feed dogs, so it only runs the motor. Put your bobbin up there, push it over, and then you wind your bobbin. When you're done, you release your bobbin and you just close that up. So it's very, very easy to, to operate. Uh, let's see. Might as well show you the rest of this here. The other nice feature of this that I liked was instead of storing your cords and foot pedal up here and scratching this all up, they're contained in this slide-on cover. And they're marked. There's a symbol of a foot pedal and the cord coming around and, and the cords and if you have a bag of attachments. When you open this guy up, here's your cords and your foot pedal. So it's a very self-contained unit, very easy to take with you, just like the old 221K. It sews a beautiful stitch like the 221 straight stitch, but this machine also does zigs zigzag and blind hem. So it's a lot more versatile than the old 21K, 221K. So let's get this plugged in. I'll show you the... There's the three prong power cord that they went to in the 60s and 70s and later. And it just <coughs> plugs right in the back of the machine here on the end of the machine. Oop, oop, got that the wrong way. Okay, there. get some power here and I'll grab some spools of thread and we'll wind a bobbin and just sew a little bit. Let's grab a thread here. Just take this black thread. Now the way that Singer suggests in their owner's manual 
is that the thread will come from right to left so it will turn clockwise and to wind the bobbin you come through the front of this tension disc into the tension disc and back over the top like that we'll get the bobbin here now I, I do this part a little different because I have a hard time threading there's a little hole in these bobbins and when you're going to wind the bobbin thread you you put the thread from the inside and out one of those holes is the idea and I find it a lot easier to do holding it than once it's on the bobbin bobbin post see if I can do this I got kind of a slippery whoop. I didn't trim that thread very good so it's kind of fuzzy on the end there let's see there we go I think I got it now there then I put it on So it's just easier for me holding it than to try and stick it in there now. This is a little adjustable uh, fill lever. So when you turn this over to wind, you can set this for how much thread you want on the bobbin, and then it will automatically stop if you want. So I'll depress that bobbin button, and then I'll hold on to this. And we'll wind the bobbin here. Oops, better turn it on. Okay. Let's do that and I'll break it off. I think that's enough for the demo. And we'll move it back. And we'll set that back to so. Pull that off. And when you put the bobbin in here, you're going to want the thread coming from the left to the right. So the it'll turn counterclockwise. There's two slits, just like in most bobbins, so you're going to go in the front one, bring it out of the back one, just like that, and then put three or four inches up here so that we can take up that thread later. Okay. So just to thread the needle now on the upper part. I'm going to take this off of the tension disc for the bobbin and we'll just leave it coming off the same way. There's the upper thread guide right there. And then this is what I call the twin hook type of tension. So there's a little hook here we're going to go over the tension disc, bring it down over the tension spring into a little hook there. Those hooks keep the thread lined up in the tension while this lever is going up and down. So, of course, we want to raise our presser foot, which releases the tension. And we'll come behind the hook and then up over like that. So then we can go in the tension, between the tension disc. Now we're on the take-up lever. I hold this to see that I'm in the right place. And if you bring this down, there should be another hook there. Whoops. I missed it. I can't see what I'm doing there. Yeah. There's a little hook, right? right on the edge of that. So if we come down there and, and hook that, 
Come on, you. There, now, I think I was in there before, actually. But now we're behind in front of this hook, down over the tension. And in that little hook, which will hold it. So now we're kind of come to the middle thread guide. Hook under that, so you can see our whole tension system here. Just like that. And then with the take-up lever, up high. We're going to thread that. Oh man, this thing is really. Let's see if I can cut that a little better with this thread guide here. I'm going to thread that through there. Okay. So we've got our whole system going here. We're going to go to a lower thread guide from right to left and it clips right in and then there's a slit on the needle holder and that's the last little place that we're going to put our thread in there from left to right I've already put in a needle in this machine the flat side is to the back the long groove and the thread will be in front, threaded front to back, because we always want our thread facing the bobbin hook, so the bobbin hook can grab it. Now I'll put down my foot, with the needle still up, we'll attempt to thread it front to back. That wet usually helps me. Oop. Oh my. Let's see if I can get it a little closer to me so my old eyes can see it better. at all this time. Yay! Alright. Make sure that doesn't get wrapped around. Alright. So this looks this looks a lot better now. So put this here. This is our bobbin thread. We'll gently hold this and we're going to roll the hand wheel toward us and we're going to go down and we'll pick up that bobbin thread with the hook, bring it up, just raise the foot and then we'll take the bobbin thread and the needle thread between the toes and to the back. So, after a short delay of threading the needle, we're good. I got a little piece of scrap here, if I can set this up. I've already done some testing on it while I was adjusting it. Let's see if I can find a little fresh spot here. I'll put this under here, go down. So we have left straight stitch, center needle, and center pattern selector. We'll set it for a real common about 12 stitches per inch. I'll just do it by hand instead of my foot, but we'll sew a little bit. thread cutter built in the needle bar. So there's a there's there's a very nice straight stitch, about twelve stitches per inch. Let's check the tension on the back. Okay, it's good. 
So our tension's about right. I took the whole tension assembly apart. I mean, I took the whole machine apart. Cleaned, polished, lubricated, adjusted everything, including the tension. So the tension works real well between two and four, depending on the on the thickness of the fabric and the thread. So let's let's go back in here again. Pull that back. I'll go right next to the other one. Put it down in there. And let's go uh, only six stitches per inch all the way down. Still straight stitch. This would be for a heavier. Lift that up. Pull it out. Cut our thread. So now we only have six stitches per inch. So I was always taught that the thicker and heavier the fabric, the fewer stitches per inch. The finer the fabric, the more stitches per inch. When you get into quilting, I know the quilters really like a very fine stitch. Let's get this down here and let's go up in the 20s and above here. Get up into this fine stitch area. Let's try that straight stitch. My tension is still good with a double. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got our middle one at twelve. The one on your right was six stitches per inch. The one on the left is 20 plus. So it's very fine. Still our tension is very good. See a very, very fine stitch there. Let's go try another stitch here. Let's get in here and we'll do a, a blind uh, hem stitch is that stitch, but we're going to go to a width, about the middle width or so. Well, we'll go a little farther. Let's run that stitch and see how it, how it looks. And you see that stitch there? In the blind hem. Okay. Let me go to just a zigzag stitch, now regular zigzag stitch. So we'll put our selector over there, put about a center weight, and we'll come back to about a 12 stitch length. Let's try this. Yep, does that real well. Let's just take a peek at our tension behind. Still perfect. Still perfect. When when those tension discs are cleaned and polished like that, they just work like they're brand new. They really, really give you a perfect tension on that. I better take this out. And cut down and get my needle thread back down through the toes. Um, let's do a little bit longer and longer zigzag. Then I'll do a sh then I'll do a shorter one. Let's see if I can get in here, bring this down, penetrate. So I'm doing a regular zigzag, wide stitch, and six stitches per inch. So give us a more open pattern.
did want to do is the last part of this maybe we'll do a little satin stitching let's come down here and get a nice clean spot and get that in there so we'll go that satin stitch It, we'll get the width this fine, but we got to go way up to this finer, finer stitch. Let's see if we can do a little satin stitch here. Let's do a narrower width first, maybe. Yeah, I think I got to go even a finer stitch up in here. satin stitch, is it? Let's see. Can get that any finer? Hmm. That's a better satin stitch. So let's go, let's see if I can go with a wider stitch. I'll just increase the width. And I'll stay up in that very fine area. See if we can get a little bit wider going on here. Nice satin stitch. Let's look at the back, make sure our tension's still good. Yeah. Once I once I clean these, before I cleaned these when I was testing, that tension was kind of all over the place. Every time I changed fabric, I had to fool with it. I changed how many layers, so that's how I just took it all apart, cleaned it, polished it, put it back together, and adjusted it. Since then, I've pretty much had it on three, and I haven't had to do anything. So this is, I don't know, maybe a medium weight, light to medium. <coughs> it's flannel, like a flannel bed sheet, something like that. So I'm going to go back to my straight stitch all the way.